the Mutual Broadcasting System presents The Mysterious Traveler. Written, produced, and directed by Robert A. Arthur and David Coker. And featuring tonight two of radio's most distinguished personalities, Santos Ortega and Richard Coogan, in No Grave Can Hold Me. This is the mysterious traveler inviting you to join me on another journey into the realm of the strange and the terrifying. I hope you will enjoy the trip, and it will thrill you a little and chill you a little as we travel tonight into the world of shadows from which no man may return. And we learn the story of one who does return. It's a story I call No Grave Can Hold Me. My story starts in a court of law where a man is on trial for his life. The courtroom is tense, for the jury is out deciding the prisoner's fate. But the prisoner himself, a tall man with glossy black hair and piercing eyes, sits calmly with his lawyer, his daughter, Nora, and his son-in-law, Harry Wilson, waiting for the fateful verdict. Oh, dear, I wish we knew. Father, I think the jury is coming in now. They say it's a bad sign when the jury is out for such a short while. You need not worry, either of you. I shall be free. I certainly hope so, Randolph, but... Well, you know, you did admit you killed Clemens. Because he insulted me. He called me a mountebank, a charlatan, a trickster. He called the great Randolph a faker. So he died. There they come. Oh, Father, I'm frightened. I had to take a new place in the jury box now. They look awfully grim. I repeat, have no fear for me. Foreman of the jury, has the jury reached a verdict? It has, Your Honor. What is the verdict? We find the defendant guilty as charged of murder in the first degree. Oh, no, no. Well, I find you guilty. The fools. They, too, think that I'm an imposter, a trickster. They shall learn different. If I die, so shall they. The prisoner will rise. Father, you to stand up. The prisoner will rise. Very well. I'll stand up. So that they will recognize my face again when they see it suddenly in the night. And know that death has come to claim them... Maximilian Randolph, you have been found guilty of the crime of murder in the first degree. It is the sentence of this court that you shall suffer the punishment of death on the night of June 6th at midnight. And may God have mercy on your soul. Thank you, Guard Miller. You can see him for only five minutes, Mr. Wilson. Yes, all right, Guard. Hello, Randolph. Good evening, Harry. I see that my Guard Miller managed to get you in to see me. Yes, he did. Time is so short that... Well, I know. It is almost midnight. And at midnight, I die. But Guard Miller has become a good friend. I knew he'd arrange it. No and I saw the governor this afternoon. He, he refused to do a thing. It does not matter. What is death but a new garment for the soul to wear? Nora's waiting outside. You said you didn't want to see her tonight. That is as I wished. You were my assistant. We were very close, you and I. And now there is a last promise you must make to me. Anything, Randolph. When you receive my body, the empty husk of the great Randolph, bury it in a vault with a bronze door which faces east. A vault facing east? Yes, of course. The door must be locked with a padlock of bronze. But it must be possible to open it from the inside but without Randolph. using a key. Randolph, you... The coffin 
must be locked shut as well. But I must be able to open it from the inside. Friend, I'll show you. Not serious. I never joke. All this and one thing more. Promise. All right, I... I promise. When I am buried, beneath my head must rest a notebook bearing the names and addresses of the 12 jurymen who found me guilty, of the prosecuting attorney, and of the judge. But, but why, Randolph? So that I may know where to seek my vengeance upon them. The vengeance I have sworn, which must be executed before my soul can sleep. Oh, Randolph, that's madness. You disbelieve. So do they. But in my studies, I have learned many things. And one of them is how to reach back from behind the dark curtain of death. I think the time is up, sir. Thank you, Miller. Goodbye, Harry. Just tell me one more thing. Is the full moon shining tonight? Yes. It's a full moon tonight. Good. And each time hereafter that it shines, one of my enemies will join me in death. And so the great Randolph went to his execution and was buried according to his instructions. After a few days, his case was forgotten. Uh, forgotten by all but Harry Wilson, his son-in-law. Well, as the first month passed and the full moon again shone in the windows of his apartment, a strange restlessness possessed Harry. Harry, what's wrong with you? No, oh, I'm sorry, Nora, but... Tonight, the night of the full moon, I'm, I'm nervous. I, I can't help it. Oh, darling, you're not worrying about father, are you? About his threat? Yes, I am. Oh, but that's absurd. Poor father. Toward the end, I'm afraid he was suffering from delusions and he was more than just an ordinary man. He wasn't entirely sane. Harry. No, maybe not, but he was so sure of himself, so certain. And those instructions for the way he was to be buried... Oh, of course. I, I'm just being foolish. Why don't you go out and walk for a while, Harry? It'll help calm you. All right, all right. I will. You want to come along? It's a nice night. No, I think I'll stay here and read. All right. I'll be back in an hour or so, dear. If nothing happens tonight, I'll, I'll know that Randolph is just putting on an act. But a little later, another man was also walking in the moonlight of a beautiful July evening. This one was short and stout. He was strolling homeward from a small poker party with his friends when in the dark shadows cast by the trees along the edge of the park, a tall figure stepped directly into his path. Just a moment, Adam. Uh, who are you? What do you want? Just to talk to you. Uh, I don't want to talk to you. Get out of my Not way. so fast, my friend. Look. A gun. Say, what is this, a hold-up? No, Adam. It is not a hold-up. Then why are you threatening me with that gun? Why have you got that scarf covering your face? Because my face has changed in the months since I was executed and buried. It's rather frightening now. What are you saying? Who are you, anyway? You're beginning to recognize my voice, aren't you? You know who I am. You just don't want to admit it to yourself. A great Randolph. Whom you, as foreman of the jury, caused to be executed. Oh, no, no, it's not possible. No one could come back from the dead. No ordinary man. But the great Randolph has no, come back. No, no, I don't believe it. This is a trick of some kind. And is this a trick, Adam? Is it? Is it? Uh, but tell me. Is uh, it? Uh, out for a walk. Who is this? Don't you recognize my voice, Nora? Surely you heard it often enough. Father. Oh, no, it can't be. Strange how skeptical everyone is of me. 
even my own daughter. Father, it is you. What do you want? I just want to tell Harry that I have claimed the first victim of my vengeance. Exactly on the stroke of midnight. The same minute when I died. Oh, no, no. And I wanted to warn him that he must do nothing to interfere with my plans. Or if he does, I shall have to add him to my list of victims. No, no, are you... Yes, he telephoned here. He, he wanted to speak to me. Yes, Harry, just a little after 12. He said that he... Yes, he... I, I know. I heard the news. I was in a restaurant having coffee and it came over the radio. Adam's the foreman of the jury. He was found strangled in front of his home. Oh, but it's impossible. And yet it was his voice, Harry. Father's voice. Oh, we've got to do something. Nora, I've got to warn the others on that list. The other jurors, Baldwin, the district attorney, and Judge Dexter. Yes, but he said if you tried to interfere... I know, but that doesn't matter. In the morning, I'm going to District Attorney Baldwin. He'll believe me. He'll have to. Oh, but Mr. Baldwin, you've got to listen to me. You've got to warn the others. You've got to give them protection. Or they'll die, just as Adams did. Winston, I'm a busy man. I have enough on my mind without having to listen to wild-eyed stories like the one you just told oh, me. Oh, but, but it's true. Randolph's instructions about the way he wanted to be buried, the notebook that I put in the coffin with him. Mere theatrical mummery. Now, Adams was the victim of an ordinary street mugging. Now, that's all there is to it. I have to ask you to leave. I have more important things to tend to. <laughs> Mr. Lord, you're a sensible man. You edit the biggest newspaper in this city. If you'll only print what I've told you, the authorities will have to take some action. Well, sir, my job is to print news for our readers, not ghost stories. If I ran your story, I'd be fired tomorrow. Then you don't believe me. I... Tell you what I will do. I'll make a story for the Sunday supplement out of it. Oh, that won't do any good. If it's in the Sunday supplement, people will just smile at it. When they see it, they don't know it's just a story. And I'm afraid there's no use in talking any further, Wilson. All right, I'll go to other papers. One of them will have to believe me. I don't advise it. You run a shop, don't you, selling tricks and magic apparatus? Yes, yes, that's right. Why? Just this. Newspapers don't believe in giving free publicity, and that's obviously what you're after. Goodbye, Mr. Wilson. I'm very sorry, Mr. Wilson, but Judge Dexter is unable to see you. Oh, but, Miss, did you explain to him what it's about, how important it is? The judge said if you care to write him a letter, he'd give the matter his consideration. Oh, that's no good. I've got to talk to him. I'm sorry. He's leaving today for his vacation, and he won't be back for a month. Perhaps he'll be able to see you then, but he simply can't see you now. None of them would listen to me, Nora. They either thought I was crazy or but they wanted publicity. They all told me to forget it. They're right, Harry. That's the only thing to do to forget it. But, Nora... Maybe we're wrong. Maybe Adam's death last night was just a coincidence. I'm sure Father had nothing to do with it. Oh, no, no, no. He telephoned you. You heard his voice? Well, I'm not sure now that I did. Maybe it was a dream, Harry. Maybe I just imagined it. So forget the whole thing. Please, Harry, for my sake, forget it. Oh, Harry, darling, it's no good just pacing up and down. Please, sit down and try to relax. I can't, Nora, I can't. Tonight's the second full moon since Randolph was executed. He'll be leaving his grave tonight, and someone else will die. But Harry, the... There ought to be a guard over the vault he's buried in. Oh, no, that wouldn't do any good if he came back to him the dead. He, he wouldn't be bothered by a guard. Please, Harry, you've done the best you can. And if it is true, and you go on like this, will you be in danger, too? I don't care. That list, Nora, the names on it were alphabetical. And Adams, the foreman, was the first to die. What are you driving at? The second name on the list is Baldwin, the district attorney. Baldwin. Wouldn't listen to me last time, but tonight he's got to. I'm going to his home now while it's still time. <laughs> Mr. Baldwin, you are in danger tonight. I'm sure of it. Deadly danger. No, you, you mean it, I'm sure, Will. Yeah. I, I thought it was some kind of a gag before. Now I can see you fully believe everything you've said. Oh, then you, you will take precautions, at least for tonight. I've been an officer of the law for 30 years. 
I've been threatened by a lot of convicted murderers, but not one of them has come back to get me yet. But you don't understand. The great Randolph is different. He had powers that, that we know nothing about. Uh, perhaps, perhaps, but I doubt it. Now, Wilson, I appreciate your warning, but I can't take it seriously. Oh, really. Then you, you won't guard yourself? No more than usual. I'll lock the door presently. I'm sure that'll keep out any ghosts who may come this way. Mr. Baldwin, please, it's almost midnight. At least let me stay with you for another hour. I'm sorry, but I'm about ready to turn in. I expect to sleep well, too. Now, you go on home, do the same. Because nobody's going to be harmed tonight by the great Randolph spook. I guarantee it. Oh, no, I... I please, I wish you'd let I me stay. I couldn't think of it. Now, you can find your way out yourself, can't you? I'm sure. Yes, of course. All right, Mr. Baldwin, I won't bother you any longer. Good night. Good night, Wilson. Well, he's gone. I'm afraid the poor fellow needs to see a psychiatrist. <laughs> Randolph's ghost. I only hope I never have anything worse to be afraid of than that. Who's there? Who came in just now? Wilson, is that you again? Oh, no, my friend. It is not Wilson. Who are you? What the devil's the meaning of this? You don't recognize me, then? How can I in that cloak with the collar pulled up over your face? That is to spare the world a sight that should remain forever hidden within the darkness of a coffin. But my voice... Surely you recognize that. What are you talking about? Now, get out at once or I'll call for the police. It would tax their powers to arrest me. They have no authority in the world to which I belong. No. No, it can't be. I see you have recognized me. You should have taken Wilson's warning, Baldwin. Because I'm here. The great Randolph at your service. Oh, it's impossible. That's been said of so many things, hasn't it? But I think I can convince you. No, no. no stay away. Help! Help! That won't do you any good. By the time anyone comes, you will have joined me in the world of death. Oh, oh. Nora. Nora. Where are you? Nora! Harry, I can hear you calling all the way down the hall. Nora, where have you been? I just went out to get the morning papers. Why? Why? It's happened again. District Attorney Baldwin has been killed. But how? Exactly the same way Mr. Adams was killed, strangled, just at midnight. Oh, no. And, Nora, I think I know the truth now. What do you mean? I don't believe it was your father at all. I think it was I that killed him. I killed them both. Oh, no, you've got to do it. There's a full moon tonight. You've got to lock me in this apartment. Oh, but Harry, you couldn't possibly have killed those two men. I could. I was near the scene at both times, and my my mind, it, it wasn't clear. I don't remember doing it, but don't you see? If, if I'd been hypnotized, I wouldn't remember. But, darling, Father couldn't have hypnotized you into committing murder. It's a law of hypnosis. The, the, the subject won't do anything he knows is wrong. I, know, I know that, but I can't be sure. I believe that in those few minutes I was with him, somehow Randolph impressed on my mind orders to carry out his vengeance for him. Oh, darling, I'm sure he didn't. But if you insist, I'll lock you in. All right. Well, I want you to go now. It might not be safe for you to stay with me. All right, Harry. I'll go to a movie. You've got to stay locked in until after midnight. Then even if I am hypnotized, I won't be able to do any harm. You do understand, Nora, don't you? Oh, of course, darling. I'm sure you're wrong, but I'll do anything you say. All right, now. Lock me in. And don't you come back until after midnight. try to get out and I won't remember it. Or... Telephone. Yes. Hello. Hello, Harry. Randolph. Yes, my boy. 
I'm glad at least you don't say, no, it's impossible. No. Where are you, Randolph? That doesn't matter. I just wanted to warn you. And don't try to interfere with my plans. But, Randolph, I thought... Hello. Hello. He hung up. That proves that I'm not the one. Then in that case... Yes. That's the only possible answer. I know now what the truth is. Oh, I've got to get out of here. The door... Oh, it's too solid. I couldn't break it down with an axe. Oh, there's no fire escape, and it's eight floors down to the street. I have it, the superintendent. I can telephone the superintendent. Tell him I lock, locked in, and then he'll come and let me out. Judge Dexter. First, Adams died. Then Baldwin. Their names were the first two on the great Adam uh, Randolph's list. Your name is third. And so you think that tonight I'm scheduled to die, huh? Yes, yes, I'm sure of it. And you say you warned Baldwin last month just before he was murdered? I did, and he laughed at me. But he died just the same. And you're seriously asking me to believe that a dead man, legally executed by the state, is walking the streets tonight seeking my life? I tell you, he telephoned me only half an hour ago. I recognized his voice. <laughs> You know, of course, that your story sounds like the ravings of an insane mind. I know it. That's why I've kept quiet this last month. I did try to convince the police, the district attorney, and all I got was laughed at. And then... Yes, and yet, uh, obviously, you're, you're in earnest. I, I don't think you're crazy. I'm not. For a little while, I thought that I was the killer. You? How? I thought that I was under post-hypnotic control, that Randolph had planted in my mind the impulse to kill his enemies. That... But that phone call proved that I was wrong. And what do you propose that we do? If we went to his tomb, perhaps, then we'd learn the truth. Well, Wilson, what do you want to open Randolph's tomb for? Don't you see? If we go there and we find Randolph is still in his coffin, then I'll know that the real murderer is my wife, Nora. I, I have the key right here. I'll have the padlock off in a minute. Well, then hurry. The moon is bright. I'd hate to have anyone see us. Yes, sir. A very strange story. A man in my position prowling around the cemetery at midnight. Oh, but we had to come, Judge. We had to make sure. Well. There. Unlocked it. We can open the vault door now. I'm rather sorry I paid any attention to you, Wilson. But we're here now, so let's get this thing over with. Now, I'm going in first. But don't forget, I'm armed. Oh, don't worry about me. There, I've shut the door. Be safe to turn on the flashlight now. There. See? There's the coffin. That's odd. Huh? What is it, Judge? Well, the air in here is fresh. This vault has been opened and very recently. Then it must have been opened by Randolph. Oh, nonsense. Open this coffin and I'll prove it. Here. How does it work? This catch on the side. Can be operated either from the inside or out. There we are. It's unlocked. Well, then lift the lid, man. Lift it. What? All right, I'll do it. No. There, there. There you are. Now, see? There's your precious Randolph, safe and sound, just as I expected. Quite dead. As he's supposed to be. He's still in his coffin. Yes, and that proves that he... Wilson. Shine your flashlight down on the floor. I, I just touched a body lying here near the wall. Body? Oh, it's Nora. She's dead. I don't think so. Here, give me that light. Judge. What happened? Why did you turn out the flashlight? Something knocked it out of my hands. I, I can't find it. Because I have it, Harry. That's why you can't find it. Randolph! Wilson, what are you saying? It's Randolph. He's not dead. Oh, but I am, Harry. But don't let that disturb you. I want to thank you for bringing the judge here to me. Wilson, where are you? You're trying to play a trick on me? No, no, I swear. He's quite innocent, Judge Dexter. And as for Nora, she merely came to make sure I was where I'm supposed to be. Just as you did. When I spoke to her, she fainted. Wilson, get the door open. We've got to have some light in here. It's no use, Dexter. I can see in the dark like a cat, and you can't. No. I have you now. No, Judge. No, no, no. You're going to die, Dexter. Executed as you ordered me 
executed. Randolph, let me go. Yes. I warn you, Randolph. I'm, I've got a gun. I'm going to shoot. You're too late. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh. Are you all right? Yes. Yes, I am. Now, see if you can find the flashlight. Right. I think I've taken care of Mr. Randolph. If it was Randolph... I think I have it. Yes, here it is. Judge, Randolph's body, it's, it's still in the coffin. I rather thought it would be. Harry? Harry, is that you? Oh, no. You're not hurt? No, just my head. I, I came here to see your father. Shall we understand, Mrs. Wilson, and then someone hit you. Yes, from yes. behind. There was someone here in the vault. I just got a glimpse of him, and then, and then he hit me. But who was it? That's what we're just about to find out. Now, let me have the flashlight, Wilson. Yes, of course. I think he fell over here. Now, yes, here he is. But who is he? He was impersonating father, but but who is he? I hear he's lying on his face. We'd better turn him over. Carefully now. He's still breathing. And that's it. Oh, hey, it's Miller, the guard from the penitentiary, the one Randolph said he'd made a friend of. Yes, the one who was guarding him just before he was executed. So that's it. It was Miller. Miller, can you hear me? What? I'm afraid he's dying. Before Father was executed, he must have hypnotized this man and ordered him to carry out his fantastic scheme of vengeance. Oh, it was a trick, but it was a very cunning trick. By means of hypnosis, Randolph used this man as a tool, even though Randolph himself was dead. He must have recognized that Miller was unusually susceptible. I think we'll find that Miller was a psychotic to begin with. Otherwise, Randolph's hypnosis would never have worked. For no normal person can be influenced the way Miller was under any circumstances. Isn't there anything we can do for him? No. No, he's gone. And with him, the great Randolph has died, too. For good. This is the mysterious traveler again. So the great Randolph is dead for good, is he? I wonder. After all, Miller wasn't the only guard Randolph had a chance to talk to. Oh, but he, he couldn't have hypnotized any of the others. I wouldn't give it another thought if I were you. Unless, of course, you were on the jury that convicted Randolph. In that case... Oh, you have to get off here. I'm sorry. But I'm sure we'll meet again. I take this same train every week at the same time. You have just heard The Mysterious Traveler, a series of dramas of the strange and terrifying. The role of the mysterious travelers played by Maurice Tarplin. In tonight's cast were Santos Ortega, Richard Coogan, Shirley Blank, and Bill Smith. Original music composed and played by Al Finelli. All characters in this story were fictitious, and any resemblance to actual persons was purely coincidental. This is Bob Emmerich speaking. This program came from New York. This is the Mutual Broadcasting System.